Hello students! The objective of this video is to understand how the periodic table is organized. As you know, the periodic table is the universal catalog of everything you can drop on your foot. The building blocks of your world and the basic stuff of all that is here, all there, or anywhere. So let's begin to understand the organization of the periodic table. As you know, there are 118 elements in the periodic table. This is the last one. And as you know, every element has its own, its own and unique symbol. Some symbols have one letter, some sim symbols have two letters, and some others have three letters. It is very important here that you remember that the first letter has to be always capital letter. You also know that periodic table is organized in periods, which are these horizontal lines in the periodic table. The first period, period is composed of two elements. How many periods can you count? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what about these two in the bottom? If you follow the atomic number from element number one, which is over here, in some point you will see when you are here in 55, 56, and 57, that you cannot continue this way. Once you get to lanthanate, you need to go to this row in the bottom and continue with 58, 59, 60, and all the way down until 72. Until then, you will return to number 72 in here. We will study later why this is happening this way. And the same happens with the next period. You can find 87 here, 88, 89. And once you are in the actinide, you need to go back to the bottom. And then you will have 90, 91, 92, 93, all the row down until 103. And then you go back to 104. Have you ever noticed this? So finally, how many periods can we find in the periodic table? There are only seven because the lanthanides and the actinates our period six or seven, just for the continuity I just told you. So there are seven periods in the periodic table. And what about rows? We can find rows, remember, I'm sorry, columns. All the columns are these vertical lines we can find in here. And as you can see, we have eight a columns or families. We call the columns groups or families. These are eight. This is the A group and there are eight of these. And this, let me change color, these are the B groups or B families and they have 10 columns. Okay, in this slide, you can see the difference between the naturally occurring elements marked in yellow and the elements that have been synthesized by human, which are marked in purple. It means that they are, they are not pre present in the nature. They are... Uh, they, they are developed 
in a laboratory and now we can find them. And some of them, you know, live, the, the life is very short for them. They are just produced. This is an important division of all the elements in the periodic table. You may see and you may find a stair line here, step stair line here, which divides the periodic table into two. You will find metals in the left side of the periodic table, which are marked in blue here, and non-metals, which are marked with yellow. Remember that hydrogen, even though it's placed in the side of metals, it is not. It is a gas. And it was supposed to be this way, but you will find out later why it is in this side of the periodic table. So, in one side we have the metals, and as you can see, is the majority of the elements. And then we have non-metals in the other side. What is the difference between metals and non-metals? Well, Metals, you already know, that are bright. All metals are bright. And in the other hand, non-metals are dull. You know that metals are malleable and ductile. Non-metals do not have these characteristics. Metals can conduct heat and electricity. And non-metals cannot do this. So what are non-metals? Actually, non-metals are gases dust, or stones. Metals have half high melting and boiling points and non-metals have low melting and low boiling points. So if you see these elements which are right in the, in the sides of this line that we just traced, this line, you can see some elements in orange. What are those elements? Those are called metalloids. And what metalloids mean? It means they have mixed properties. They are part metals and they are part in part non-metals. Which are these metalloids? It's boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic antimony, tellurium, polonium, and astatine. Those are the metalloids. And let me explain to you a little bit about two very important metalloids. First of this is silicon. Silicon is, the, is one of the most abundant elements on Earth. You know where you can find silicon? In the sand of the oceans. That's why we extract silicon to make chips for computers and another part of the hardware, I mean the software. And germanium also. Germanium is another metalloid which is used in the fabrication of optical fiber and it is used to, for chemotherapies, for people who is getting cured from cancer. And as you can see, the majority of the elements are metals. We have a lot of metals, some metalloids, and some others, a little bit less quantity of non-metals. Here you will find some characteristics of metalloids. What about the physical state? If the majority of the elements are metals, it is obviously known that almost all of them are solids. This in blue, all the blue means solids. And what about this? marked in yellow. 
They are the only gases in the periodic table. You already know about mercury, which is located here. Uh, but you know francium has very low boiling point, so sometimes you can find it as liquid. And the same happens with boron. If I ask you which are the two metals which have a liquid state, the answers will be francium and mercury. And which is the only non-metal that can be liquid? Then the answer is bromine. And what about all the others? These that are marked in red. Hydrogen and all of these are mainly gases. Let me show you another important zone you will find in the periodic table. With orange, you may see that we have some representative elements, mainly A groups. All these A groups are called representative elements because they have predictable characteristics. In blue, you will find the transition elements. They are not very predictable, you will find out. And at the end, you will find inner transition elements. Remember this from, from the, which are located in the bottom of the periodic table.